Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. Wyoming coach Vic Koning says Washington is a West Coast Tennessee. They can beat you every way. Offense, defense, special teams. But Washington says they're still looking for their first complete game of the year, and they're determined to get that tonight against the Cowboys. Well, joining me tonight is former All-American quarterback Tom Ramsey and Rams Cody Pickett, who's the Washington quarterback, says the key to a complete game is, number one, a fast start, and number two, don't force stuff. Steve, Coach Rick Neuheisel is looking at Cody Pickett to, one, get him that fast start just to get him out of the gate, get some continuity on, on offense, and don't force it by lead by example. And he's been doing a great job thus far, but they need him to step up in his leadership capabilities. And I mean beyond the two straight 300-yard games he's put together thus far this year. If they're going to make a run in the national standings, he's going to be the guy flipping the switch. And I'll tell you, He's got a guy he's throwing to tonight that everyone's going to love. He's the Rod Smith Terrell Owens of college football. This is Reggie Williams, a split end slot guy, flanker for the Huskies, 55 catches as a true freshman, almost 1,000 yards. This guy is a dominant, dominant player. They're going to get him the ball quite a few times tonight. How about Wyoming? I mean, they've got Casey Bramlett threw for over 3,000 yards last year, but he says he's been forcing it a little bit too. Well, he's been plagued with some interceptions last year, and he's been trying to force the ball some this year. Even though he's got five touchdowns so far in three games this year, Coach Vic Conan wants him to lead as well, and that means don't force the ball. Put together some drives. Drives, get the ball down the field, but I tell you, if you force it against this Husky defense, you're asking for trouble. No question, and the challenge is a mighty one for the Cowboys tonight. They've got Pickett, Williams, and this guy to worry about, Rich Alexis. Wyoming has their hands full with Washington tonight. Welcome again to one of the most beautiful settings in college football, 82-year-old Husky Stadium with Lake Washington out beyond. It is absolutely gorgeous evening. It's Wyoming in town to take on number 13, Washington. The third member of our broadcast team is Lewis Johnson. Lewis, what do you have? Hey, Steve, thanks a lot. Many think that Wyoming's best shot at attacking Washington tonight will be to spread the field and throw the football and I mean throw a lot so that means that the Huskies in their secondary will have to be solid and be prepared and who does that responsibility fall on well, it falls on two key guys first of all a quarterback by the name of Rock Alexander and he told me that playing the correct technique tonight will be critical you know like jamming the receivers and making sure he's got his back pedal in order and then there's nickelback Chris Massey who told me he knows that Wyoming will try to use trick plays with lots of wide outs he said his focus will be getting lined up properly before the play starts to make sure that nothing gets by them because if the confidence begins to build things can change Steve and Lewis one of the keys to Washington's success this year force more turnovers and get their fans involved Washington enters tonight's game with the longest active home winning streak in the Pac-10 at 15 consecutive games. Nebraska has won 24 straight at home. Miami 17. And there is coach Rick Neuheisel. You see his career at Colorado and at Washington. He led his team to the Holiday Bowl where they had an exciting yet losing contest to the Texas Longhorns. And on the other side it is Vic Koning, a Kansas State linebacker who led a Jim Dickey team to the Independence Bowl back in 1982. This is his third year. He's had a rough time, only three wins, and they have tied the school record for the longest losing streak, 11 defeats in a row. Come on, Let's hear it. Come on. Wyoming is ready, and they are determined, and that's a scary thing for Wyoming. 
because Washington came out last week against San Jose State a pretty good San Jose State team and went down 10 nothing in the first half. You bet. New Heisel gave them a scolding at halftime. They scored 34 in the second half. Well, but Washington came out flat a week ago, and Steve, they're in the midst of a long home streak, and you just don't want to come out flat again, especially against a very hungry Wyoming team. Wyoming to kick off. Washington won the toss, and they elected to receive. Charles Frederick and Nate Robinson are back for the return. It is a short kick. Oh, and looks like it's covered by Washington. Wyoming was almost able to pick it off inside the 35 yard line. Let's check out the Keo Sarah starting lineups. There's Cody Pickett, the junior from Caldwell, Idaho. Big guy at 6'4, 215. His backs and receivers, we told you about the great Reggie Williams, but Rich Alexis has gone for over 100 yards rushing in the last two games. And he has a big physical offensive line. Khalif Barnes and Nick Newton are very strong tackles, both over 300 pounds. Pickett will give it to Alexis, and Rich is past the 35 yard line near the 37. The Wyoming defense. They will run a 4-2-5. Now, Casey Adams, Chad Bueller, and Brandon Casavan are their defensive linemen, but they'll bring down a linebacker as well. Herman White, Tyler Gottschalk, and Zach Morris. Jacques Finn is also a linebacker, and he is called the Rover. He will come all the way up to the line of scrimmage. Dixon and Rod Johnson are the corners. And Jacques Finn, who's one of the most talented defensive players, is hurt on the first defensive play of the night for Wyoming. This is a kid who will flat hit you, and when they lose Jacques Finn, that is a lot for the Cowboys. The junior from Casper, Wyoming, their leading tackler with 26 this year. Pick it to the air. Reggie Williams, his first catch, and he is near a first down. Let's see if we can see where Finn. I believe he just gets rolled up on Steve. Yeah, sure enough, he got caught on the side of the pile. Looked like his own man may have rolled on him. Get a little treatment by the trainers. And we just saw a moment ago, just saw a moment ago about Reggie Williams. He lined up in the slot, caught a ball. Washington keeps it on the ground. Herman White on the tackle. Alexis on the carry. I would expect Rich Alexis, Steve, he's he's been averaging over 25 carries a game. I would expect him to get about the same tonight. They really need to come out and establish the run. Let those young players up front, Barnes, Backert, Dix, Newton. Those guys need to get untracked. I know. The coaches so much they look at the quarterbacks but it really starts in that offensive line and they love to get it established I mean the old Huskies had big huge offensive linemen to go on to play on Sunday and these guys can too here's Patrick Reddick and Reddick up near another first down as he's past midfield to the 48 yard line they have so many weapons particularly at the wide skill positions for Washington Reggie Williams Patrick Reddick Wilbur Hooks Paul Arnold Charles Frederick Eddie Jackson and Steve watch this right here all Cody Pickett he ends up seeing a lot of space right here it's just a quick check at the line of scrimmage he picks up fires it out there you gain six yards why not line up third and short Washington likes to run option these times and they will here and Pickett will keep it he slides forward but I believe he'll be a little bit short of that first down Zach Morris the defensive end making the tackle now Steve Coach Rick Neuheisel may contemplate this. The crowd wants him to go for it. If you're going to send a message early on, if you want continuity in your offense, you end up going for it. And I think they're going to get a little cheer from the crowd here. Well, something went wrong. Rick Neuheisel charged down to one of his coaches. And here comes Cody Pickett up to the line of scrimmage. They'll run a power eye formation. And you're right. There was a wrong call because Cody looked down, saw the wrong people on the field, called a timeout, and New Heisels. Huskies burn a timeout early.
Washington comes right out of the break and goes for it on fourth down. Rich Alexis slamming the right side and getting the first down to the 43 yard line. But why not? The Huskies were 13 for 19 on fourth down conversions last year. That's an incredible 68% success ratio. They are now two for two this year. Alexis in motion. The fullback, Zach Tuyasa Sopo. Whose brother Marcus was a great star here and led the team to the Rose Bowl as a quarterback and will be joining us in the second quarter. Yeah, we sure hope he comes up. His busy schedule, but his his younger brother Zach, Steve, four, he had 41 tackles last year. He was a he was a linebacker. And did you see his eye black? I mean, he has it all the way down to his chin. Uh, he's There's a bad no dude. way he has a bad glare. He's a bad dude. I'll tell you, you go from linebacker to fullback, you're you're still blowing people up. <laughs> Pickett looking deep. Reggie Williams is knocked down by Rod Jackson, and there's the flag. Steve, that's what I like about this offense so much. Reggie Williams, Coach Keith Gilbertson, the offensive coordinator, and Steve Axman, the quarterback's coach, they work at getting Reggie Williams open, but they work at getting him in a lot of different areas. You see how he got mauled running down the field and Pickett did the nice job laying it out. It's either your guy catches it or nobody catches it. And that guy right there is a the heck of a player. 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first down. He's averaging 19 yards a catch, two touchdowns, over a thousand yards in his career. Here's a look at Vic Coning, Wyoming coach. And now a first and ten. At the 26 of Wyoming, Pickett, screen, Alexis, and Rich with great power and determination gets the first down near the 10-yard line. Steve, this is exactly what the Washington coaches were talking about with Cody Pickett. Plays down the field, he knows where his outlet is, shows great, great patience. Watch how this play develops. He's looking down the field. Got nice play down the field, but all of a sudden comes off outlet. Well, give it to him. Rich Alexis, heck of a player. Get, picks up a great block right there. Might have been Charles Frederick that came back and got himself a block. And look at Oregon State just blowing out Fresno State. We'll have the Beavers next week on Fox Sports Net at USC. And last time we checked, USC was down 19 to 6 at Kansas State University. There is a flag down. As Rich Alexis trying to take it in. That is Nate Young, their free safety. And now they're going with Jay McNeil, who has to take over for Jacques Finn. Jacques Finn was Vic Koning's best defensive player as far as tackles go. Finn is all over the place. And now they have to go with the young man, McNeil, who is just a sophomore. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask on the defense. Half the distance to go from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That has been the Wyoming story this year. They have started 0 and 3, losing at Tennessee, at Central Michigan, and then last week at home to a very good Boise State team, 35-13. And Steve, it's not that they're playing bad football; it's just inopportune football. They just have made mistakes when you just can't make them, especially early on in the ball game. Alexis hammering, leaning forward. And I believe they mark him down at the one yard line. It will be second and goal for the Huskies. Yeah, it's one thing after another for the Cowboys when, when and they're lose, they lost one of their really good players, John Amoni, outside linebacker who plays that bandit linebacker, kind of a rush guy in that defense. He hurt his shoulder, didn't make the trip, and they miss his presence already. The 11th play of the drive. It is a Washington touchdown. Well, they wanted continuity in the drive. They had a fourth down conversion at midfield. And watch the push they get from the fullback. Zach Tuiasa Sopo, he just pushes <laughs> and keeps on pushing <laughs> and keeps on pushing Cody Pickett over the goal line for the TD 
So Cody will now hold for the point after touchdown. It is perfect. And on an 11 play drive, Washington routine on Wyoming, 7 0. Cody Pickett used to getting in the end zone as second touchdown rushing this year but he had five last year as a sophomore and we remember the most dramatic when he scored against Arizona on the last play of the game. Take a look at the Nissan scoring drive 11 plays 67 yards five minutes off the clock I, I'd call that continuity Steve I'd call that a good quick start for the Huskies. Wyoming hurt themselves with two penalties one a pass interference and the other one put the ball inside the 10 yard line get Bradshaw back deep for the return Leonard Jones with him and out past the 20 yard line is Kit Bradshaw still on his feet finally dropped by the Huskies let's check out the Keosara Wyoming lineups Casey Bramlett from Wheatland Wyoming population 5000 64220 and he will be joined by a lot of receivers Bradshaw will be the running back but look at his receivers McGuffey Floyd Ralph Sorensen are all guys who play a lot Sorensen mainly a blocking tight end and very physical offensive line Kellerman Goldberg are starting for the fourth year McGuffey goes motion. Leonard Jones coughs it up. Wyoming tries to get that football and they get it back. And wow, it was almost like last week against Boise State when Casey Bramlett's first pass of the game was tipped by his receiver McGuffey, interception, and returned for a touchdown. Well, Steve, the guy that disrupted the play, Greg Carruthers, the strong safety, played up on the slot receiver. Oh, and then Rock Alexander comes up, just rocks his world. Oh, goodness. Oh, man, come on up, Rock. Just go ahead and blow up the ball carrier. <laughs> well, Tim Hundley, the Washington defensive coordinator, he's the first one who told us, fast start. We want to get off and really explode on Wyoming. And there they explode on Casey Bramlett. Manas Hopoy with the tackle, along with Jerome Stevens. Let's check out that defensive line. Terry Johnson can be a wonderful athlete. He has to attack that pie a little more. Kai Ellis, his motor's running all night long. Ben Madavi's their leader. Marquise Cooper, a very athletic linebacker. And they will go with their nickel package. That means Chris Massey makes the start. Rock Alexander, he's a corner along with Derek Johnson. Greg Carruthers, he can really pop you. 19 tackles this year. Bramlett on third down. Is sacked at the 15. Marquise Cooper. Steve, you mentioned Marquise Cooper. What a great player he is. A great speed player, and he comes right up the middle. Coach Tim Huntley, the defensive coordinator before the game, I asked him, he said, you got to put a lot of pressure on Bramlett early on. And he says, you know, Cooper's my guy to hit that A gap and come on in and disrupt them on any kind of passing downs. And they're going to see a lot of passing downs tonight. So on comes Luke Donovan as Wyoming is three and out. The dangerous Charles Frederick. Frederick will let it go. It bounces inside the 40 yard line to the 38. Dies there, so the Cowboys will be back on defense. Well, Rick Neuheisel got his fast start by the offense, then the defense, and his offense takes over for the second time.
Washington has a 7 nothing lead on a Cody Pickett one yard run here at Husky Stadium. Crowd of 70,000 on hand. And the Huskies ready to roll again. Reggie Williams, Patrick Reddick, Paul Arnold are the receivers, and they quickly get it to Reggie in that slot. No, check it. It was Kevin Ware, the tight end. Let's go to Lewis Johnson. Well, Steve, early in the game, we saw Wyoming's Jack Finn limp off the field what seemed to be an ankle problem. Well, just a few moments ago, there's Jack going inside the stadium to have his left ankle x-rayed. They took the tape off. He was in obvious pain. They tested him out again. He couldn't do any drills on the sideline, so now they'll shoot an x-ray to see if he has a bigger problem. Uh, Jack Finn going in for x-ray. Steve? Lewis, what a shame because that's their third terrific defensive player not playing tonight. Jack Finn, John Imoni, and Gary Wright. Imoni won't play the rest of the year, and Gary Wright out with a foot injury, who's their best cornerback. So Jay McNeil takes over at that rover position. Washington gets the first down on the pass to Kevin Ware, the tight end. Ware will line up on the right side. Rich Alexis is the running back with Zach Tuyasa Sopo. Alexis, big hole. Rich, 10 yards to the 42 yard line. That's just a great block by the fullback, Steve. That's just a straight ahead isolation fullback on middle linebacker. That's a victory for number five. <laughs> he just got after the linebacker. And when we talked to Vic wow. Koning earlier this week, he said every time we saw number five, he had a San Jose State guy on his backside. He really hit you. I call those pancakes. Well, he's had a couple in this game. Ooh. Cody Pickett had his man Eddie Jackson wide open but threw behind near the 22 yard line Eddie Jackson the junior college transfer from Coffeyville Junior College in Kansas and, and one of the reasons he threw the ball behind there, there there's a smiley face and, and one of the reasons he appeared to throw the ball behind he wants the receiver to sit down in that hole and and Cody Pickett is seeing what the coverage is as the receivers are running into coverage they got to recognize what it is they're running into. If you have a void in the coverage, sit down. Alexis to the 40, fumbles the football, and it's recovered by, let's see, looks like Wyoming gets it, and they will. And that's a tough break for the Huskies, Steve. Third and one, little, little pitch to Alexis had the apparent first down and when he got hit ball came out there's the option Alexis carrying the ball in the inside arm hit comes from inside out and a mad scramble for the ball Cowboys doing a nice job of hustling making that play so Wyoming has the football for the second time in this game got chalk falling on it the junior from Hayes Kansas Casey Bramlett will try and get his offense going and he tries the middle with the running game and a very short game by Kit Bradshaw a sophomore from Evergreen Colorado. You know that is the first turnover by Washington. Where are they going with a hurry up. They swing it out right. And it is a nice game for Scotty Vines. That's good. No. That was Dustin Pleasant. Thought it was 83. It was 13 instead. Dustin Pleasant, a true freshman. And a flag came out as as Pleasant was running down the sideline, Steve. And I'm not sure what the apparent call is, but the, the way it looks, it looks like it's against Wyoming. Probably a hold. Our referee is Gordon Reese. Holding offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Still second down. That's not a bad penalty because it is from the spot of the foul. It's a college football Saturday presented by Kiyosera, Wyoming at number 13, Washington. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Lewis Johnson with you. We're at Husky Stadium. Great crowd on hand as Washington trying to go to two and one on the young season. Wyoming win their first of the year. Bramlett 
throwing it to the left. That's Ryan McGuffey, his favorite receiver, and McGuffey's to the 40-yard line. He'll still need another seven for a first down. Let's take a look at that touchdown from earlier in the game by Cody Pickett, the 6-4 quarterback. Well, Washington's first drive of the game, they converted a huge fourth down midfield, and then the big fullback, Zach Tuiasasomo, giving Cody Pickett a little push into the end zone for the first score of the game. Wyoming was three and out on their first drive. They've been helped by a penalty on this one. Now third and seven. Blitz from Marquise Cooper. Oh, and what a hit. Derek Johnson. The tight end Sorensen with the catch. The mark will be important, but it appears, Rams, that they'll be shy of a first down by about a foot. Derek, Derek Johnson made the read, and you see Bramlett right there saying, let's go for it. Let's go for it. This, this is, yeah. You know, Washington going for it, I can understand early in the game. Wyoming, I can see putting the ball away right here. This is a wise decision by Coach Vic Coning. You don't want to give the Huskies the football at midfield. Charles Frederick back to receive Donovan's punt. Frederick with a fair catch at his 16 yard line. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Lewis Johnson with you. The Washington Huskies with a 7 0 lead on a Cody Pickett one yard run. Now they have the football on offense for the third time. A fumble on their last possession. Cody to the right. Arnold had it in his hands, and then it looked like the helmet of Chris Dixon may have broken up the pass. That's a nice play by Dixon. I, I was talking, of course, Arnold, the converted tailback, now a wide receiver. He's right over here. He's going to try and get up the sideline. And Steve, I asked Keith Gilbertson, the offensive coordinator, before the game, I said, who, who needs to get on track? Who's the guy, the one guy you want to get some plays to? And he said, Paul Arnold. If he, if Paul Arnold starts to have that momentum game, they become that much more dangerous because of all those wideouts. Pick it back to the air, completes the pass. Reggie Williams is knocked down by four Wyoming Cowboys. They'll mark it up near the 33 yard line, so it will be a Washington first down. Well, Reggie Williams is a good, just a, a big target. For Cody Pickett to throw to Steve and, and just run such precise routes. That's what gives you such a clean picture when you're a quarterback. You see a lot of different coverages these days. You know, we were talking to the Washington offensive coaches yesterday, and they said, hey, you know, oh, we're going to see a grab bag. We're going to see zone. We're going to see man. We're going to see zone blitz. And I said, well, how do you attack that? Well, you really have to attack the voids, and the receivers have to know at all times what they're running into. Pick it. Plenty of times and completes the pass this time to Paul Arnold. Very close to a first down. But Rams Keith Gilbertson, their offensive coordinator, told us yesterday pre snap reads have become irrelevant. What did he mean by that? Well, and that's exactly what I'm saying. You're going to see a, a grab bag of coverages, you're going to see zone blitz, which, of course, they may drop a defensive lineman in coverage, rush a safety, but really not bring any more guys. There won't be an unblocked defender, but you got to find the void in the safeties in, in this defense. In particular, you're going to have five defensive backs. They run a 4-2-5, and it's just the read of where guys and where helmets are, essentially, where defenders are. Williams with his third catch of the ball game. Andy DeSelms, the outside linebacker with the tackle, but there's Cody Pickett who does have something in common with Wyoming. He is named after a city in Wyoming. His dad, D, was a champion calf roper. Here's Washington with a little no huddle themselves. And a sack is made on the kid who is named after Cody Wyoming. And a great defensive play by Wyoming. Steve, this is a big hit, going to come right on the top of the screen. Unblocked defender. You have to like the bold move there. Matt Wallerstead, the defensive coordinator, bringing the heat that time. I still didn't get a number. 
Who made the play? Shane Powell. Our man Rock Nettles, quick to point out. Yeah, he was a, he was a, a third string linebacker. Shane Powell. That's six sacks now, third and 14 for Pickett. He has a little more time this time and wings it downfield. Completes it at midfield for the first down. How about that? Charles Frederick, the sophomore from Boca Raton, Florida. Shane Powell was there again. Put the final hit. Zone blitz. They had a defender drop out into coverage. Cody Pickett showing great patience. Getting the ball down the field. Charles Frederick is another one of those great wideouts you want to spread the ball to and get him involved in this offense. Pickett pumping left, coming back right, and it might have been tipped, and that's why it went through the hands of Wilbur Hooks. That was a nice pump fake away. Wilbur Hooks, I don't think he saw the ball the whole way, Steve, and I think that's part of the problem. You, you're not accustomed to playing night games, and all of a sudden the ball comes out of that dark abyss behind him, which is a beautiful lake, of course. But that's a tough one to pick up. Would you were a quarterback, would you have been so understanding with that very thoughtful comment you just made about a receiver who just dropped the football? Absolutely. I would have said, <laughs> can't you see the ball coming at you? <laughs> you know you're going to get it. <laughs> that was the first time out you for know, Wyoming. Do you, you know I never had a receiver that was covered, though, when I played? They, well, they told me they were open all the time. That's right. <laughs> I wish I could tell you we won up here, Steve, but we, we didn't win up here. And you would have been national champions if you got it, Rams. I hate to rub it in. Paul Arnold! What a beautiful throw by Cody Pickett. Because he saw the cornerback, and it was in Cody's vision. Well, and you have to take your shots deep. Right here, a little wheel route. And you see the defender look back, and right when he looks back, he loses the step. And that's a great job by Paul Arnold. Great athleticism. Watch as he comes down. Oh, that's oh, nice. It looks like his toe oh, did he get got, in. He got the one foot in. He that's got a the great necessary. read by the side judge. It really was. He was right on top of it. Washington with 11 first downs, and they're hammering away at the Cowboys inside the 15-yard line. Well, that brings up our website question. You can go online and answer this question. Should there be instant replay in college football? No. No, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> that's, think that's so my vote. I just, I wasn't sure if we would be leading fans on to vote our way. We'll ask our special guests, though, if, if they should have replay in college football, though. Marcus Tuiasasoko will be joining us in the second quarter. And here is Cody Pickett. Sliding towards the right side and getting it and fumbling the football and they're saying Wyoming has it. And they do it is the second turnover on the last two possessions by the Huskies. Both times they were in Wyoming territory and there is a disappointed. Rick Neuheisel because the one thing he told Cody. Hold on to the football. Yeah, you see he him fumbled watch twice last now week. He comes option. He's optioning this man right there. Ends up, and he's a guy that creates a fumble. That's that's Gotchuk. 47. That's a nice play, Steve. He just strips the ball from him. And the Cowboys have another fumble recovery. And I'm sure Newhouse just said, hey, secure the football, would you? Cowboys need the breaks like that, and they've received two. They are plus two in turnovers in this game. Bramlett with the handoff to Derek Armaugh, a short gain up near the 15 yard line. Steve Axman, quarterback coach, veteran coach, been a head coach at Northern Arizona, top candidate for some of the head coaching jobs that will come up around the country at the end of the year. He knows a lot of football, I'll tell you what. He coached Troy Aikman, pretty good player. Pretty good player. He coached Marcus too, Yasusopo. Pretty good player. Bramlett surrounded, fumbles the football. Washington fighting for it. Wyoming fighting for it.
There's one second remaining. It is Wyoming football. They still have it with one tick of the clock left in the first quarter. But they have been humbled by a fired up Washington defense that has stopped them on all three of their first quarter possessions. That's the end of the first quarter with the score seven nothing Washington. You're watching College Football Saturday presented by Keo Sarah on Fox Sports Net. Steve Fiziak back with you. Washington with a 7 0 lead. Let's go to Tom Ramsey. Well, Steve, special guest, awfully special guest, and Marcus Tuyas of Sofo tonight. Bramlett firing the right side and completing the pass. Now let's go to Tom. Hey, Steve. Well, special guest, I told you a minute ago, 2001 Rose Bowl MVP, current. Oakland Raider Marcus Tuiasa so but Marcus I have to ask you the biggest difference between college and pro football well the, the definitely the speed is a lot faster the speed of the game is fast uh, the terminology which the players have to, to learn and, and go through at a uh, quick second uh, there's a lot and it's a lot to handle yeah no more 20 hour work weeks you're you're on the uh, the, the big work week hours uh, now. It's, it's nine to five and we, we put a lot of work in we've studied a lot of film uh, and we get after it. Well, Wyoming just picked up their first first down, and now they will run that football. And they run Dustin Pleasant, the true freshman from Temple, Texas. Washington scoring on a one yard run by Cody Pickett earlier. And again, Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey with Marcus Tuiasosofu, who quarterbacked this football team for Washington to the Rose Bowl a few years back. Now with the Raiders. It is second down and six yards to go. As a quarterback, what do you do here? Well, you got to get to the man. Uh, <laughs> get a catch and run ball. Hopefully, you can get the first down. Throw it. I, oh. And they're going to run Derek Armand. Well, you know, we we talked with Rick Neuheisel, and we told him that you would be up in the booth with us. And I said, say something about Marcus. And he said, Steve, he was a field general. He's a guy who could win a game with his arm, with his legs, and with his will. And I said, can you compare him with Cody? And he said, well, Cody's got a little, little, few more weapons than Marcus had. You had to do a, a lot on your own. What was that like, that special season? It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of great guys. And a lot of people like to say that, uh, you know, they have a lot more weapons now. But we had guys that worked hard. We believed in ourselves when we went and, and we won games. It is third and two. Bramlett looking underneath. Completes the pass for a first down. And knocked out of bounds is Leonard Jones who came out of the backfield. And Steve that's that's a nice throw on third and two Casey Bramlett showing the strength of his arm there getting the ball out in the flat to Leonard Jones and that's something they need to do too is get continuity Marcus doesn't know how hard it is to play in this stadium I do in order to string together some first downs and just build some momentum it's awfully tough but Bramlett over 3,000 yards a year ago. I mean, he can put it in the air now. By far their best drive of the night. Armand firing through past the 40, gets another first down. I have to ask Marcus, with their Sunday night game against the Pittsburgh Steelers two weeks ago, all of a sudden, Rich Gannon's throwing the ball, what, 60 times in the game? You guys spread out that that Vaughn really a tough Steeler defense but what, what a great game plan coming into that game they've been working on that all offseason and Rich went and uh, performed mas a masterpiece out there on the field you know Rich is as old as I am you know that <laughs> I tell you what Rich plays like a 28 year old he's tough I love him to death and the guys love him tell him I said hey I will <laughs> Bramlett through behind Armagh it is incomplete Bramlett on second and ten Leonard Jones firing through Leonard Jones great speed inside the 20 yard line. Marcus what's it like being on the sideline 
as a quarterback when your defense is struggling a bit? Well, you feel bad because you want to get on the field and you want to put up points to give your defense some confidence to go out there and make some plays to be able to pin their heads back and get out the quarterback. And when, when you're struggling on offense, it kind of, the defense, they're on the field a lot, and, and it gets them tired, and, and that's a lot to ask for a defense. Well, right now, Washington, who had turned back every single Wyoming threat earlier, suddenly Casey Bramlett has come alive and led a beautifully executed offense here in the second quarter. And firing through is Kit Bradshaw. He will go in for the touchdown. Wow. Well, that's what that's one way to quiet the crowd right there. Not that crowd. That's the that's the Wyoming contingency. What a nice play. Watch. He ends, ends up going to come back this way. Just takes a little jab step and they move the two receivers to that wide side of the field, Steve. And all of a sudden you see nobody home. Talk about a void in the defense. I like how Kip Bradshaw went in for 32 went sky. Wyoming comes to Seattle they are tied in the second quarter on this run by Kit Bradshaw We're in Seattle, Washington, a harvest moon over Husky Stadium. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Marcus Tuiasasopo with you. A 7-7 ball game, and Wyoming will now kick off. See, Marcus, I, I promise our viewers all the time, Steve Fiziak is the master of history and also horticulture. You knew the harvest moon. I, I'm, I'm really <laughs> impressed. I got help from you, brother. <laughs> What a drive, though. 88 yard drive by Wyoming, who has been struggling this year offensively. And Washington will take it near the 27 yard line. Well, Marcus, you were once a young quarterback. Cody Pickett is now a junior. That was the time where you were given the starting opportunity. What, what kind of quarterback is he like? Uh, Cody's a tough kid, and he can throw the ball. And you know he's still young. People, he's been here for a long time, but it's only his second year playing, and he's still learning out there. Um, he plays hard, and he's a guy that uh, you know the kids can rally behind. Now Washington with the football, throwing underneath to Kevin Ware, and Ware will get the first down near the 40-yard line. Marcus, this offense has so many variables in it, and, and, and I really have always respected what Coach Neuheisel put together in terms of the experience of years of all the coaches that taught you. I mean, how, how I guess, how, uh, how much variety is there in this offense? There's a lot. Coach Neuheisel likes to do a lot of things. He doesn't want to keep uh, doing the same thing each week. And you can see an option here, see a double pass here. Uh, you know, we'll run the ball a lot. Uh, who knows? You never know what you're going to get. Well, they go double tight end here and they run Rich Alexis and Alexis to the 44 yard line. Let's go to Lewis Johnson. Well, Steve, this picture of Jacques Finn on the sideline with the crutches and the ice bag on the left ankle probably says it all. The good news is that the x rays were negative. There is no break, but there is a bad sprain in that left ankle, so he is obviously done for the game. Steve? Well, that is tough to see because he has been their leading tackler this year, and you see what he has done in the Wyoming career. Now Washington with the football inside 12 minutes to play in the first half. They stay with a single back look with Rich Alexis now picking the throw and it's over the head of Charles Frederick. It will be third down. Well it was the Rose Bowl a couple of years ago. Marcus Tuiasa Sopa was the quarterback. Let's go back and Marcus what was this experience like. This was one of the most. Uh, Gratifying experiences that I you know, have with my teammates, uh, the Rose Bowl. That's what we set our goal when we first came in as freshmen. To be able to achieve that 
in our senior year uh, was awesome. We had a great time. Other than that pitch that I've gotten a thousand questions about, <laughs> I'm just trying to score more points. But uh, it was it was amazing. Well, what was he like to play for? It was a lot of fun. Guys love him. He makes you work hard. Pick it. Firing downfield. Getting the first down to Reggie Williams. It's Williams' fourth catch of the game. First down at the 40 yard line. Nice third down throw by Pickett. And, and I have to ask Marcus this too because I think there's a fallacy out there about Rick Newhouse will always being the player's coach that he's easy on the players. But I think there's a little different story in film room and out on the practice field. Yeah, we saw a totally different coach Newhouse than what we read in Sports Illustrated before he came here. He came in here, he got after us. He said, We're going to work harder if we're not going to work hard. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do. We'll keep you out here for 12 hours. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Take it back to the air. Underneath he goes. First down, breaking free. Reggie Williams inside the 15 yard line. Hey, you know something, Steve? Marcus and I are standing here. A couple old college quarterbacks, right? Well, one old college quarterback, a young, <laughs> young graduate. But here's a guy, number one, Reggie Williams. This guy is the real deal. I mean, you talk about a big target to throw to a guy that finds the seams and the voids in the defense and gives you a nice target to throw to. Oh, no question. He's the quarterback's dream. <laughs> Find number one, get the ball up. Six feet, four inches tall. Pickett looking right, throwing back left, incomplete intended for Wilbur Hooks. They had number five out there for a while, and I wanted to ask you about number five. That's Zach Tuiasasopo, your brother. Tell me about him. He's a defensive end, now fullback. Yes, uh, he made the move this past spring, and I've never seen a happier a kid. I talked to him in spring uh, camp, and uh, he's loving football again, and he was glad to be back on the offensive side to be able to block for Rich and the tailbacks and also get a couple of balls himself. Most guys say they love going to play defense because you get to hit people again. Well, I think uh, he only made this move because he still could do that. You know, all the ISO blocks he, he gets to do. Keith Gilbertson said he and Tim Hundley were both fighting for Zach to play on their side of the ball. Alexis past the 10, diving to the five. And, and you know, we're talking about Reggie Williams a moment ago, but but I want to know as a as a quarterback, I mean, you got Tim Brown, Jerry Rice. Come on, man. Oh, it's a dream to go out there and <laughs> practice with those guys. They run perfect routes, and they just make a quarterback throw a ball good. I, when I get there, I don't want to throw a bad ball because I don't want them looking back at me and go, come on, Rook. <laughs> <laughs> What's you, know, the biggest, you know they're getting open. What's the biggest adjustment? from this level to the professional level for quarterback and for me it's the terminology of, of our offense be able to get that down and then take it on the field and apply it in the game time situation well, here is Cody Pickett third and three Alexis to the three well they got stoned right at the line of scrimmage Steve trying to run behind trying to run behind the big left tackle Khalif Barnes and he just got stonewalled. The Cowboys playing awfully tough D. And John Anderson comes out, senior place kicker. Washington stop. It's fourth and a long one. And here is John Anderson, outstanding throughout his career, pumps it up and through. And Washington has the lead back 10 7. Leonard Jones will go to one knee. Wyoming will be back on offense with their quarterback, Casey Bramlett. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, with Marcus Tuiasasopo. And Marcus, we really want to thank you very much for joining us tonight. I know you have a lot of 
friends and family out there you want to get back to. But thank you very much and best of luck to you. And well, thank you very future. much for having me. Appreciate it. Marcus, best of luck. Have fun against those Titans. Get in there. We can go watch that film tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah. We'll get after <laughs> it. is Casey Bramlett. Marched his team down on an 88 yard drive last time he had the football and gains two yards here. Inside nine minutes to play in the first half Wyoming playing inspired football when you consider Rams they were completely shut down by a Washington defense and then Washington was driving on their defense two straight possessions and fumbled both and, and Steve their coach Vic Coning he watched the film from two weeks ago against San Jose State San Jose State jumped up 10 nothing look at Leonard Jones going for another first down up near the 35 yard line they mark him out of bounds at the 36 they jumped ahead 10 nothing and I'll tell you no team is invincible you, in college football teams can get beat there were a lot of upsets today in college football right there that's just getting the corner and a nice block by the receiver he got the corner on the ground and next thing you know Leonard Jones is wheeling his way up the sideline I'll say there are a ton of upsets today Idaho beat San Diego State. 48-38. Wyoming within three of Washington here in the first half. And once again, a nice run by Leonard Jones. There is a flag down, and it was near that line of scrimmage where it might be holding. One guy I think Wyoming has to incorporate more in their offense, Steve, is Ryan McGuffey, the big target of the Cowboy offense, and such a stellar player, has put up big numbers throughout his career. And Bramlett and McGuffey make an awfully good combination, but he's such a good looking athlete. Boy, I saw him come out before the game. Holding offense, 10 yards from previous spot, still first down. I mean, he's fast, he's strong, he's powerful, smart, academic, all Mountain West. They ask him to read a lot of defenses where he can be in, in tune beautifully with Casey Bramlett. But he had a concussion against Tennessee, did not play against Central Michigan, so came into the first game with only seven catches. I like how they're spreading the field on the, on the Huskies. Leonard Jones finding a gap, and you're right. Right now, Rams, they are finding the gaps in the zone, and those receivers are sitting in those areas, and Bramlett's finding them. College Football Saturday, presented by Kiyosera. Wyoming and number 13 Washington Steve Fiziok Tom Ramsey Lewis Johnson with you at Husky Stadium 10 to 7 Washington with the lead a one yard run by Cody Pickett a Kurt Kit Bradshaw touchdown run for Wyoming a field goal by John Anderson that's the story Bramlett changing the entire play at the line of scrimmage Blitz is on. Bramlett with time. Oh, he had his receiver wide open. Dustin Pleasant and Bramlett with six rushers in his face could not find the open Pleasant. Wow. And, and you know, asking Coach Vic Coning if, if Casey Bramlett had a fault, it's that he cares too much. Now, to me, if a quarterback cares too much, that, that's an awfully good fault to have. That ball is so close to being caught. And both quarterback and receiver knew it, but that, that's a great check at the line of scrimmage. Knowing they were in blitz to get the ball out, even though it's long third and down, facing them right now, third and 16. Three wide to the right. Bramlett underneath, and he is ripped down. Greg Carruthers. Great recognition and execution by Carruthers. Great Carruthers, 118 tackles, six for loss in his Washington career. That, that's from a strong safety position. Now, granted, he'll drop down a lot of times in the box. Bobby Houck, the defensive back coach over there, give him a tap on the forehead and give him an attaboy. They've been kicking it away from Charles Frederick and why not with his speed? going to try and return this one and he goes 
Frederick written down at the 40 yard line. I see they're reading our cue cards well again. <laughs> it's spelled W O O O O and Y E A H. Vic Conan, he said his team lacked the confidence and they were looking for something to get them. The team out of the muck and mire they've been Violation in. Violation of the two yard belt by the kicking team. That's 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Washington. But Rams, it's easy to lose confidence when you've lost 11 in a row. Boy, that kind of changed in a hurry, didn't it? We were we were here touting, well, at least I was on Friday afternoon, how strong the Pac-10 conference was, and UCLA got whacked today by Colorado. Arizona went to Wisconsin. They got beat. USC, of course, getting uh, beat by Kansas State. But you know, Bill Snyder, he's a sneaky now. Now he is a sneaky coach. It is he's hard a, to win in Manhattan. He's an awfully good coach and Vic Coning what I like Steve the Wyoming head coach has called Bill Snyder on occasion and tapped into his resources and said, hey how do you do it. Pick it. Rolling back and he hit Eddie Jackson right but on the number six and he could not hold on. Pickett throws underneath Rich Alexis. Boy, he just lowers his head and hammers into the defender and gains seven on the play. But Rams, you were talking about Vic Coning and what he's going through and calling Bill Snyder. And Kansas State built a great facility. That's right. And they also had friendly scheduling with their non-conference opponents. And really, Wyoming has not played the likes of Tennessee, Texas A&M, and others through the years. Yeah, you don't you don't think going to Tennessee and going to Seattle or no, I wouldn't call that friendly either. I, I call that very competitive and you know and there's benefits to it but there's also th there's some risks involved and, and Steve the risks are when you go in and play a Tennessee or you play a University of Washington perennial top 10 team top 20 team you're going to face teams that are awfully deep and and what has plagued Wyoming in the last four years is that the recruiting base you know recruiting's become this battlefield and you got to have resources you got to have facilities you got to show people hey we got field houses we have turf fields we have grass fields that's kind of what Washington has up here and look at Alexis blasting to the 25 yard line Rod Jackson finally brings him down there is a flag down on the play and I'm not saying that's the only reason but if you build it they will come and and it's a matter of financing I've said it from day one since we've been working together college football is now a financial game it's it's more than what's being played on the field the financial game is who can generate the money to build the facilities you need the fundraisers you need the donor groups and you got to give coaches support because they got the toughest job out there. Gordon Reese with the call personal foul against Wyoming. There's the explanation. Six penalties for the Cowboys 63 yards. You cannot be hurting yourselves when you're playing the number 13 team in the nation. Personal foul on the defense half the distance to go from the end of the run automatic first down. Take a look at the run. Look at the big people out in front of him right there. Rich Alexis hitting the hole nicely. 
knife and through. Well, nothing looked excessive to me. Well, anyhow, Rich Alexis, 6'0", 220 pounder, out of Florida. Now think about this. this. This offense is loaded with young players. This whole team of Washington is loaded with young players. That new Heisel's head, the recruiting has really been good. They used to play a lot of freshmen. They're only playing one or two right now, two freshmen. Throwing it into the end zone, incomplete. Paul Arnold had it in his arms, and Pickett scrambling nicely, incomplete. Let's go to Lewis Johnson. Steve, you may be wondering why Husky wide receiver Doug Clark is not in the game. Well, if you look over my shoulder, you'll see him there with an ice bag on his left shoulder. Trainers brought him out of the game earlier. They took the pads off. It looks like he has a dislocated left shoulder, so he is done for the game. Steve? Thank you, Lewis. Ouch. Earlier in the game, Jacques Finn left for the Wyoming Cowboys. The three fine defenders out this game. John Imoni, Gary Wright, the other two. Second and ten. Inside the 13 yard line of Wyoming territory. Pickett, Williams, incomplete, flag down. Chris Dixon with the interference. Again, that, that's a play made because number one's going to draw some attention. But if you're Cody Pickett, you want to get the ball up in the air quick. And then Williams, as he goes up with it, gets the push and. Dixon just can't get away with it because the line judge is right there. Flag comes out. Automatic first down. So the ball will be placed at the three-yard line. First and goal inside the, you know, at the three. You, you don't want to waste a lot of time here if you're Washington. 4.43 left on the clock. Numbers on picket so far. A lot of yards, 15 to 22. It's Zach Turiasasopo trying for his first touchdown of his young career. He slams it to the one-yard line. That Turiasasopo family, pretty good football family. Wouldn't Ma it interesting how he said Zach is having fun again? Zach yeah. was a great fullback at Woodenville High School here near Seattle and part of a state championship program and wanted to go back to offense. He likes hitting people again. He likes leading the, off, the running back through the holes. Now, now their father, Manu, ex-UCLA, great. San Francisco, Super Bowl champion, 49er. I'd hate to see him running the football. <laughs> well, Rich Alexis runs the football right into the end zone for his third touchdown this year. This is where it can get deflating for Wyoming. This is when you have to make a stand. Washington gets one here. Alexis goes in standing up. But it's how you respond now after the point after and on the kickoff. Anderson's point after is good. It's 17-7, Washington. The Huskies by 10 over Wyoming. 4.02 left in the first half. A little different story than one week ago when they hosted San Jose State and the Spartans went to the locker room leading 10 0. Washington would outscore them in the second half 34 0. Leonard Jones, big hole. Washington wanted a complete game, and thus far they haven't seen that they got off to a fast start, but then went dry for a bit. Until that last drive. Well, I, I like this right here, even though I don't know about the decision taking it four yards deep, but I love the return by Jones because what he does, Steve, he doesn't stop running hard. And and they have to finally push him out of bounds. But all of a sudden now you're starting at the minus 39 yard line, but you're you're really close to midfield. 
Casey Bramlett, strong arm kid. He can he can get the ball down the field for you, and they've created some problems for this Husky defense. Bramlett led one terrific drive on an 88-yard drive. And again, they're ripping off big chunks of yardage against Washington. This time, Kip Bradshaw, who scored the earlier touchdown, was finally tackled by Evan Benjamin. Well, what they've been able to do is run away from strength, run away from the strength of the formation, run to that weak side. That's a pretty good takedown on the outside linebacker, Kai Ellis. Looked like he might have got away with a hold, but I like what they're doing. They're running essentially to the open side of the formation away from the three wide receiver side and that's how they scored that first touchdown. Kid Bradshaw on an 18 yard run scored the touchdown he now is 31 yards rushing Rich Alexis meantime with his first of the game third of the year. Yep. Good hard run and I think what Vic Coning, you, you know, part of Steve, when you haven't won a game, it's convincing, it's convincing the players, hey, if you continue to compete for 60 minutes, good things happen. I always say run fast, good things happen, right? Well, and Vic, they do. <laughs> well, Vic was part of that drive when he was a college football player, a linebacker at Kansas State, because the Wildcats, one of the worst football teams in the country, and Vic senior year, they went to a bowl game, the first. A long time at Kansas State. Now they will run Leonard Jones, but again, they're getting great surge from their tackles, and both of them are four-year starters. Adam Goldberg, number 74, on the left side, and number 79, Rob Kellerman, on the right. Let's just call him Goldberg. Goldberg. Let's get after it. I like it. They're working the clock here, calling it at the line of scrimmage. This is where a guy like Bramlett can really take advantage of all that playtime experience he has. Play action. Sorensen with the catch. Did he step out of bounds, though? Apparently not. I believe he got the first down. Nice throw and catch and run again. Bramlett doing a nice job. That's a nice, safe throw. Watch, he stays Ooh. up, puts his hand down, takes a big hit, but not after he got the first down nice play by Sorensen he's replacing their starting tight end Marshall Schaap he's a transfer from Florida Florida won today over Tennessee Jones somehow sneaking for a couple and then may have fumbled the football at the 38 yard line Downfield they go incomplete looking for his big wide receiver Malcolm Floyd or Brock Ralph He's complete Steve watch this Kai Ellis and this is one of the toughest players to defend in the Pac-10 Kai Ellis will come after you He'll come after you all game long. That's a nice job of just keeping him away from the passer But this guy is fit 6'4, 250 pound senior chiseled out of stone <laughs> and coming hard right there Kai Ellis Wyoming is an impressive three for five on third down conversions Kit Bradshaw will not get it this time he is stopped by Rock Alexander and I think this is four down territory this is where you need to go and go ahead and go for the first down even though it's going to be fourth and what appears to be seven I think you have to go for it here. And I believe they're not hesitating at all. Casey Bramlett. Good use of a timeout by Wyoming. We ought to just have a wrestle off. Wyoming has Goldberg and Washington has the rock. A wrestle off. Wrestle off. Wyoming has played a strong football game down by just 10 points Rams with 137 to play in the first half. They've played well Steve. I, I like the, the courage they've showed. They're, they're not rattled at all. They came in. They knew they were going to play a tough team. They knew they were going to play a top 15 team in a tough environment. Not a lot of teams come up here over the years 
and win games. And, and right there, that guy, the quarterback, Casey Bramlett, very resilient so far, playing within himself, not doing too much, but checking off the line of scrimmage, almost hit that one play. This, this right here, the play of the first half for them, they convert this, they'll get a little momentum and possibly get some points out of this drive. Washington showing a four-man front. And they will try and run the halfback pass. And he's still alive with the football. Javon Bonite is finally ripped down by Jafar Williams. But Bonite, who was a quarterback in high school at Denver Emanuel High School, came to Wyoming as simply an athlete. They didn't know where to play him. Defensive back, wide receiver, running back, quarterback. Well, Bo Knight, watch, the ball is supposed to come back to Casey Bramlett. Very similar to what the Cal Bears did last week against Michigan State. And you see how Bo Knight tried to keep it alive. Jafar Williams just said, uh-uh, uh-uh. This isn't going to go any further. But I, I like the call. You know, you, you, a little razzle-dazzle. I mean, fourth and seven's not easy. They tried to run to the wide side, just didn't get it. Now Pickett gets it back. Throws underneath to Rich Alexis. How about Cody Pickett? He's thrown for over 200 yards in the first half. And, and Steve team the, has just 17. The risk you run with going, in, going with a play on fourth down, they turned it over. All of a sudden, UW has the ball midfield, and you got, you, you got that player right there. Cody Pickett at the controls and as I said in the pregame hey this is the guy who could flip the switch well he flips it to the left side and cut down after a short game rich Alexis well they're finding different ways to get rich the football they're running him out of that eye formation out of the single back formation they're swinging it out of the backfield using their second time out here there's Washington is Washington Armand Woodson his big brother is a pretty good player in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys, Darren. Yes, he is. Darren Woodson, a great player. Oregon State against USC. I like USC the will be angry after losing to Kansas State today, but Oregon State, boy, they put a pounding on a very good Fresno State football team today. Well, remember, Oregon State and USC battled last year's game, an OT game, and went to overtime. USC won, but it, it's a great, it's going to be a great game. Pick it to Paul Arnold, the former running back. Gets it to the 31 yard line. It's a first down. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. I'm just going to get to the game early next week, make sure I get the buffet line early because all you guys are trying to take all the food. Uh, you were left out last week. <laughs> Inside one minute to go. Huskies by 10. Oh. Good catch by Paul Arnold or Charles Frederick, excuse me. He holds on to that football when he got knocked by Chris Dixon. Charles Frederick just climbing the ladder. A young sophomore. Great speed wide receiver. He's a move guy too. You can put him in a lot of spots in the offense. Pick it. End zone. Incomplete. No interference on defensive back Rod Jackson. And this is what I think Rick Neuheisel does as well as any coach in college football. Clock management. Well, and, and, and play calling, Steve. Right now, my, my guess is this. They've run, they've run to the post, they've run some hooks, some turn-ins, okay? They've tried to get the post. Now you try to run a post corner. You try to come back out and go to the corner, make it a safe throw, okay? But use the field to your advantage here. 38 seconds left, they will run, and it smelled out beautifully by the middle of that defensive line. Brandon Casaban there, Herman White, timeout taken by Cody Pickett. Hmm. That's a hmm. Personally, I'd have thrown the ball. Third down and 13, blitz is on. Pickett firing. And to the 11-yard line, Patrick Reddick with the catch. Now they've got an option because they're very close to a first down. Will, will they? I guess they're right. They needed to get to the 10 for the first down. It's fourth and one. Well, you don't have a choice now because the clock's running. Now they'll just—they've got to go. 
He fires it. Frederick down to the six yard line. Time is called with one second left. Will they manage the clock just barely perfectly because now they can go for the field goal or the touchdown. Oh there's no timeouts left. Excuse me. Pickett lines him up. And they tried to manage the clock well. Oh. And Rams they did not to end the half. Wow. Wow. That's part of the growth of a young quarterback. Huh? Game management, clock management. College football Saturday presented by Keo Sara. It's Washington 17, Wyoming 7. Steve Fiziak along with Tom Ramsey. Washington wanted consistency for four quarters, but Rams in the first half, two fumbles, and I think Rick Newhouse would like to see better game management by Cody on that last drive. Well, a little inconsistency, a little inconsistency right before the end of the half, Steve. They have 21 first downs, only 17 points, and I think what's happening right now, the coaches are saying, hey, concentrate bring it together use your heads and Rick Neuhausel got after him right before the end of the half let's listen to Rick Washington kicking off to start the second half. They have a 10 point lead. Well, Washington was down 10 nothing last week to San Jose State at the half and came out and buried the Spartans in the second half winning 34 to 10. Here's a look at the halftime stats. 21 first downs you said they should have more points with those first downs. Well, total yards and remember now two turnovers that's that's going to cause some problems and that's what Newhouse was saying, said, hold on to the ball. Got to gotta hold on to the rock because you can't go lawn bowling and expect to win. And defensively, they have not been forcing the action. Rock Alexander pinning his man there and getting help from the defense. Manas Hopoy. Hopoy's a big kid. Here's the numbers. Casey Bramlett, eight completions, 11 attempts, 50 yards, no interceptions. And I tell you, they had a couple key third down conversions, Steve, in those numbers. And, and Bramlett's done a nice job. He's checked off a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage. He's gotten them into some good plays. And what they were able to really find a weakness in that Husky defense was they, they ended up going to the weak side a couple times away from the two receiver set or three receiver set. This time they stuffed the middle. Josh Miller was there, Terry Johnson as well, and Ben Madavi. Well, I, I like Tim Hundley, the defensive coordinator, what he did, one of his changes he made at halftime. He just brought Rock Alexander on a corner blitz. What had happened early in, and Alexander goes off. Right now he goes off. He had a little hat trouble there. Once he pulls his helmet off, but he came off. He was just on a blitz. It disrupted the play. Now at the 23 yard line, a timeout of the field. We'll be right back. Washington with a 17 7 lead Wyoming facing a third down and seven situation and Steve Wyoming in the first half three of six on third down conversions blitz on from Marquise Cooper 
Plenty of time for Bramlett, and it's intercepted. Derek Johnson, his first pick of the year. That's just a flat-out bad throw. Casey Bramlett with a lot of time. This is great protection. And watch. We're going to slow it down. And oh, boy, DJ, what a break on the ball right there. Great angle he takes. Bramlett doesn't get his foot into the throw. Derek Johnson breaks on the ball, makes the interception. And now, Steve, you got this Washington offense, who I'm sure had uh, a talking to at halftime with the short field on the plus 30. Pickett threw for 241 yards in the first half, and they only scored seven. This is Rich Alexis, and this is the seventh catch for Rich in the game. He had 96 yards rushing slash receiving in the first half alone. Let's go to Lewis Johnson. Hey, Steve, a lot of folks thought that Wyoming might have been blown out in the first half. When I talked to Vic Coney coming out of the tunnel, I said, look at the scoreboard. Can you guys still believe? And he said, yeah, we can, but we still have a lot to overcome. We're fighting the 11 losses straight. He wants his guys in the second half just to make plays. I'll throw it back to you and tell you what Rick said in just a minute. Thank you, Lewis. Right now, second and two after the eight-yard gain by Rich Alexis. It's like they're going to go muscle up. Now they'll change the play at the line of scrimmage. Well, Wyoming showing nine in the box. They're throwing. And it is caught by Wilbur Hooks for a first down. Lewis. And, of course, Rick Neuheisel coming out of the tunnel asking him what the keys were to the second half. He said they just need to calm down and play a complete half of football for the first time this year. He said they're moving the ball at will, but he wants his guys to relax and simply play better in the second half. Steve? This is a team that almost beat Michigan at Michigan. 31-29, the final score, Wolverines winning. Now they're at the Wyoming 16-yard line after the interception by Derek Johnson. Alexis, short gain, Tyler Gottschalk on the tackle. You know, Steve, Lewis brings up a great point in what Rick Neuheisel said. In terms of being patient, th there's rising expectations. They have a senior coaching staff, lot, you know, tons of great coaches, but you got to distribute the ball, and, and you got to be patient when you do it. The wide receivers getting a lot of work tonight, 172 yards going to them, and... The running backs, like you said, Alexis with six catches. I mean, that, that's a nice job of spraying the ball around, if you will. And this time it's read beautifully by Gottschalk, the junior from Hayes, Kansas. Brings him down near the 16-yard line. That'll make it third down and about 10 yards to go. Gottschalk has been very active tonight. He and Herman White, the two inside linebackers of that 4-2-5 defense, those guys are really, I, I think they have the most pressure on them of 82 players on the field because you got to protect against the run. you got to be involved in the pass game, pass defense. Now Washington looking at a third and 10. Pickett has thrown for over 250 yards, but no touchdowns. Underneath he goes inside the five yard line for a first down the tackle by Nate Young. And it's Patrick Reddick again a sixth year player and Steve Patrick Reddick's going to be right here. He's just going to break in the middle of the field and what Cody Pickett does so nice is he's patient right here. Bang gets the ball in right before the linebacker breaks and lo and behold you got a first down on the plus five. Nice play by Pickett. Option. Alexis, his second touchdown of the night. Oh, they're going to mark. <laughs> Are you I, kidding me? I believe. I thought his right foot was inside the cone. Oh, goodness. Well, they got to turn the horn off because it wasn't a touchdown. Well, do you, do you have replay in college football or not? Be nice if you did sometimes, but you know what? I'm not a proponent of it, but Alexis right here. See if he steps out of bounds. Well, he stepped out of bounds once he crossed the goal line. I'm not sure what the line judge saw, but anyhow, it's spotted at the one. Second and goal. They'll try it again. 
And now we can say Rich Alexis with his second touchdown of the night. Alexis goes in standing up once again. And you know, Steve, that's just a, that's a tough break for Wyoming because all of a sudden you give Washington the short field, the plus 30 yards. Now all of a sudden, boy, I tell you, you get back on your heels a little bit. And I think Wyoming, if it, you know, again, it's how you respond to adversity. They got to come out and put a drive together early, early in this third quarter. Well, Alexis scores his second touchdown. And a handshake for the referee. Rich Alexis leading his team to a 24 7 edge on Wyoming. Washington trying to move up in the polls. Currently, the ranked 13th, Leonard Jones, will go to one knee. And Wyoming will have it offensively for the second time in the second half. Those two players right there, responsible for a lot of what's going on. The Nissan scoring drive, Washington, seven plays, 30 yards. 307 Alexis second TD run of the game both of them by the way going in standing up now Wyoming kid Bradshaw is the lone running back Bradshaw not much Marquise Cooper closing up the hole Manas Hopoy there as well and we asked that question earlier, should there be instant replay in college football? 62% said yes. And Rams and I were part of the 38% that said no. <laughs> well, well, we'll go ahead and make it 40%. How's that? Washington defense still in that nickel defense. Five DBs. Bradshaw again stuffed at the line of scrimmage. It will be third and ten. Hey, Cooper Steve. with another tackle. He's had a wonderful game. Hey, Steve, you know, going back to that poll, you, you, you look at the poll and you see, should they have instant replay or not? Well, there's a lot of plays each year that happen in college football. I, I still love the purity of the game. And I'll tell you where the problem is in instant replay. Just turn it on Sunday and watch the NFL. They, they have instant replay and they still can't make a good decision. So that, that's the best reason not to have it. The athletes make a mistake. So do the officials sometimes. The NFL is live with it. The NFL is comical almost. Bramlett has it to throw it away as Washington's defense is really stiffened up in the second half. You know, the one thing I do like about the instant replay in the NFL, I think they should have a, a contest during the course of the season on which head coach can actually throw the red hanky the furthest. I've seen some good throws. <laughs> Who's the leader this year? Um, I think Gruden fired one out. He's a young guy, though. You know what? I he's put a, my money on him, too. You know, he's a young guy. Yeah, I might. Doesn't have any rotator cuff problems. Uh, you know, I tell you, Mike Shanahan, you might want to throw it over to Kubiak and let him throw it out there. <laughs> Frederick goes down near the 40 yard line so Washington will have it for the second time in the third quarter. Well our chunky soup trivia question name the four division one a schools with older stadiums than Washington. And this is the 83rd year for Husky Stadium. The mind bender once again. We don't give anyone an easy question these days. Well, this is one of the great venues to watch a college game. I, have, I think I can get uh, maybe three of the four. I'm going to write them down. Alexis muscling his way forward. Rich now over 50 yards rushing on the night. Also over 50 yards receiving on the evening. 
58 yards on 18 carries. You might remember he's had back to back 100 yard games against Michigan and San Jose State. Washington has not had an opportunity to have too many big plays. No, they have Steven right now. Two tight ends, two wides, one back. So that's their ace formation. Still run an option. Alexis turns the corner and gets the first down. That the reason you run two tight ends, two wides, you, you run a what's called a balanced formation. And what you hope is the defense shows a little void right here. They end up running to that little bubble if you will Cody Pickett goes to the line of scrimmage it's the call is a check with me it's an option left or an option right he gives something either an odd or even call or a left right and they start the play and run and once again showing another personnel group there Steve Axman right there just saying run it keep rolling it they're gonna start using the clock now to their advantage Pickett play action rolls away from trouble and a quick pass right into the hands of his wide receiver, Eddie Jackson. And that's the second time Eddie has dropped the ball tonight. Hey, Steve, I, I was watching the, our, our college football Saturday show today, and Kellen Winslow broke down pass receiving as well as I've seen anyone ever do it. Now, of course, he's a Hall of Famer. You got to give the quarterback a target. Come back towards the football right there. Eddie Jackson drifting up the field, and that, that's the biggest no-no you could you could ever do running up the field drifting up the field you got to you got to show the quarterback your numbers Pickett has completed 24 of 33 passes and he's had about four drops this one is caught and it's Kevin Ware his tight end John Wilson the middle linebacker on the tackle and Ware knowing exactly where he was got just enough for the first down and Kevin Ware stepping in for the departed Jeremy Stevens I mean those, those are big shoes to fill because Stevens was such a big part of the offense as a pass catcher and where the senior really provides a lot of steady performance for the Huskies I mean he got a lot of game time last year Stevens was hurt for a while and you know when you have an experienced tight end I think it means everything for an offense. Alexis slamming forward almost knocks the umpire over guy tool on the tackle but Washington has been known for plenty of great tight ends like Cam Cleland Mark Bruner, Ernie Conwell and Steve Ritz Alexis mentioned earlier got a bunch of catches coming out of the backfield pick it to Alexis and then Alexis in for his first score Alexis once again just has great north south running ability I mean he's knifing in there and that's his second touchdown of the game standing up he's running like Alexis and now <laughs> 72 yards rushing Pickett all kinds of time throws completes it to Eddie Jackson but Jackson could not hold on you know what I'd do if I was Eddie Jackson I, I'd go ahead and walk over the sideline and just take those gloves off and I'd, I'd get myself another pair of gloves. Those got some bad luck in them. They just got some bad mojo. And well, you he's need, getting open. You need good mojo. Bobby Kennedy, wide receiver coach, saying, would you go, go put a little tack on that? Put a little, get the tacky glove. Don't get the, the glove with the, uh, the Teflon. <laughs> get Fred Bolitnikoff's gloves. Right. Alexis fumbling it. And who has it? Wyoming should have it. Yes, they do. Steve, this is the third fumble by Washington in this football game. Steve, you, you know, Washington's looking for some perfection, and they're not getting it. They're playing sloppy football. Ball's on the ground. They're dropping balls. They're fumbling the ball. And, and even though they're controlling the game, they just got to hold on to the rock. We'll be right back with Washington with the lead on the Cowboys.
Washington with the lead but minus two in turnovers and they have been costly. They're keeping Wyoming in this football game. Casey Bramlett setting up in trouble. There's a flag down and a sack made by Marquise Cooper. Marquise with his second sack of this ball game. Steve Marquise Cooper is one of the fastest players on the field and, and his reaction just a moment ago just a stellar reaction great pursuit and he recognized that Casey Bramlett was in trouble offense. that penalty is refused it'll be second down yeah there's the hold right there at Japoy. <laughs> I'd hold him too but you've got a linebacker in Marquis Cooper who uh, holds his high school record in the high hurdles. That's a fast linebacker. He's from Gilbert, Arizona. From the 13. Washington brings just four. Ran with all kinds of time. Nobody's open. Finally he finds a man and past the 25 yard line is Scotty Vines. Bramlett blitz on. Casey fires incomplete. In the second half, Wyoming only has four yards total offense. Washington has 63. But Wyoming now with 10 plays for four yards and one interception. And this is where you can get into trouble against the Huskies. Now they're playing the field position game. They want to get the short field back on offense. The defense stepped up, and they stepped up two weeks ago, too, against San Jose State. Really shut them down in the second half. And Marquise Cooper and company bringing the hammer onto the Cowboys. Charles Frederick, who also plays on the Husky basketball team, back near his 40. Fair catch. Hang time. Terrific 4.6 seconds. And now Cody Pickett. We were telling you earlier he was named after Cody Wyoming. His father is a champion calf roper and was at a rodeo in Cody Wyoming when Cody was being born. So that's how he got his name. He says that's what his dad D says anyway. For the record Cody Wyoming is a town of 8800 in the northwest part of the state near Yellowstone Park named after Buffalo Bill Cody. I think playing football might be easier than being a <laughs> Being a steer roper. Oh. There goes Rich Alexis. Boy, Zach Tuiasa Sopo, number five, the fullback, just getting after it as a lead blocker. Tuiasa Sopo, we had Marcus, his brother, former Rose Bowl MVP, with us in the first half, which was kind of nice. A current Oakland Raider. I almost say LA Raider all the time, and I apologize, but. The they Raiders. Were, they were the Raiders. Second and seven for Cody Wyoming. Pick it. Reggie Williams. He is so strong, Rams. The separation he had in the first defensive back. To muscle away from him and still have that great concentration well, to catch the football. Steve, now what? This is so good. He comes off the ball and and he's going to sit down right in that hole. Cody Pickett was said they they said hey they game plan at halftime. They said look, throw it to the back shoulder because what you're getting is two man or man across. The, the defender's going to run with Reggie, but if you throw it to his back shoulder, he can stop, catch the ball, and still make a play. That's just a great throw and catch. 34 yards on the play. Now Rich Alexis blasts to the 10. Williams, meantime, six catches in the ball game and 100 yards. Well, he was averaging 111 coming in to tonight's ball game, 22 rushes. Over the century mark now, two rushing touchdowns. Alexis he, with 90, but Williams with 100. Williams with 100. You Alexis with 90. Thank you. Oh, 
Pickett. Nothing left. Goes back right. Paul Arnold drags his man into the end zone. Doing a nice job, Steve, working to get open and just a little look that appeared to be kind of a delay that he ran. Brought the defender in, came back out. Washington has opened up a 31 7 lead on Wyoming. with his first touchdown catch of the year and showing those old running back skills dragging the defense into the end zone Bradshaw past the 25 out to the 28 yard line let's go to Lewis Johnson hey Steve I don't know if you guys know this but wide receiver Paul Arnold for the Husky has a reputation for switching his hairstyles and the fans found out about it well this fall Fans got to vote online to choose the photo that would run in the UW's game program. So would it be the Braves, the Afro Puffs, or would everybody vote for the Afro? Well, about 5,000 people voted, and when it came up, the winner, Afro Puffs. Look at that wig. Have you guys, I kind of wonder what you would look like, Steve, with Afro Puffs. Rams, what do you think? That's Halloween coming up. That's <laughs> what Rams and I will be doing on a Fox Sports Net show. Lewis, I, I just say, what's up with that? <laughs> I like the Afro Puffs too. What is up with that? Looks like he was part of the Mickey Mouse Club. I, I don't know. Who, who are the 5,000 people that vote for that? Rabid it's a beautiful husky, world. Rabid husky fans. We should celebrate the differences we have. Dog man. <laughs> Inside four to play in the third. Bradshaw. This play has worked several times for Wyoming in the ball game. They've done a nice job. L little delay. Weak side read for the back. They've been working this area right here. Nice little tackle trap and and ball carriers patient. Let's the play happen in front of him and then they've turned it into a nice game. They've run that play several times and really utilized it to that weak side. Bramlett again checking off the line of scrimmage and I think they got to continue doing this Steve just spread the Huskies out and mix run and pass Bramlett rolling away from the pressure now it comes back to him and he throws it away Rock Alexander with the good coverage and pressure Ben Madavi was blitzing on the play you, you know it is when Marcus Tuiasasopo was up here one of the things we asked him was their game against the Pittsburgh Steelers how do you neutralize a, a good defense or a great defense spread them out and make them declare what they're doing because if they show blitz you, they got to bring guys close to the ball close to the line of scrimmage and if you have blitz routes built in and side adjustments you can get there's a huge area right there look how far they're playing off You've got to have a three-step drop though. Well, oh, you just sometimes you just got to face. Sometimes you just got to pick it up and not even take a three-step drop. Just pick it up and throw it. Well, they sat down in that soft area, and Scotty Vines with the catch. We saw Cody Pickett do that in the first half, I believe, with Patrick Reddick out of the slot. He just he just took a step and fired it one step, threw it to a slot receiver because. The defender's 10 yards off the ball. And you see that now more in the NFL. They get the ball and fire it out just as a hit. It's not even a hitch. It's a, hey, I'm open right now. Throw it out here. Third and short. Third and one. They get the first down. 
inside the 40 yard line Aaron Robbins a backup tight end with his first catch in his Wyoming career I have a feeling it won't be his last nice call third and one little play action inside and nice throw and catch and what I'm seeing about the Wyoming Cowboys Steve there is no give up there are blocks being thrown down the field there's great effort being shown and, and I'll tell you you know the coaches really the Wyoming coaches really have given positive reinforcement through this three game skid that they've opened the season with I mean they haven't fought fire with hey you guys are lousy they've they fought a three game losing streak with hey you guys are good even though we're hey we're going to Washington great opportunity we're playing a top 13 team Watch the pressure come though. Anthony Kelly, 47. What a great, great play. Ben Madavi, number 41, a former walk on into the Husky program. From nearby Mercer Island, that yes. is the fifth sack by the Washington Huskies in this game. And Madavi, really, Steve, he's one of those guys, kind of a silent leader. Not even a silent leader, he's a vocal leader. I shouldn't say silent. Javon Bo Knight with the catch moving again on the Washington Husky defense James Sims the free safety on the tackle Sims get the start tonight nice throw nice catch good tackle good band they got a big band that Husky band is good and I'll tell you you know credit Credit, well, well, I'll talk about this in a minute. Third and nine for Wyoming. Bramlett changing up at the line of scrimmage. Clock ticks down to three. Bramlett fumbles it, and then he goes down. Pinned by Kai Ellis. Ellis grabbed his jersey. Kai was on his back, and he just would not let Bramlett get up. You know, Steve, one of the reasons quarterbacks don't like the shotgun is for that very reason. You're trying to look down the field. You're trying to see what the coverage is showing on a pre-snap read. You see a bunch of guys moving around. You know they're coming with blitz. You want to just get the ball and throw it. And I guarantee you, Bramlett took his eye off the ball for less than a split second, and, and he didn't make the play and had to take the sack. That in it. It's interesting that you say that. I don't remember Bill Walsh having Joe Montana go shotgun. Never, never. I would imagine it's just so difficult to read the defense when you're in the shotgun. That's a lot of. That's a lot of fight. Inside 42 seconds left in the third quarter, and Paul Arnold with another catch, and Cody Pickett with over 300 yards passing in the ball game. You know that's what they do best. They throw the football and a lot of people talk about balance but when you throw it so well and you have so many weapons like Reggie Williams and Patrick Reddick and Wilbur Hooks and Paul Arnold and Kevin Ware and Charles Frederick my goodness and they're they're all having good games third straight 300 yard game Steve and I tell you that that's impressive he was averaging 332 coming into the game that's pretty darn good first time in Husky history back to back 300 yard games and now he's gone back to back to back and Eddie Jackson with another first down well first time ever back to back to back think about it Mark Brunel Warren Moon Chris Chandler Marcus Tuiasa Sopo Damon Heward I mean these, these are guys that are all in the NFL still you know except for Warren Thank goodness this he, he retired after 25 years. This university <laughs> has put more quarterbacks into the NFL than any other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you go back to Sonny Six Killer. Yes. That's the end of the third quarter with the score 31 to 7, Washington. You're watching College Football Saturday presented by Keo Serra on Fox Sports Net.
Washington with a 31 7 lead on Wyoming. Steve Fiziak along with Tom Ramsey. Rams Cody Pickett didn't get off to the fastest start. He wanted the offense to in the first half, but has he shown the leadership you wanted to see in the second half? Steve, I really think he has provided a great deal of leadership, and you can't argue when you're throwing for over 300 yards three straight games in a row because I tell you, that's leadership alone. More importantly, he's done a great job managing the offense. Now Pickett stepping up, firing long. And it is incomplete intended for Wilbur Hooks. A little razzle dazzle on the opening play of the fourth quarter. Here's our. Game summary Washington 31 Wyoming 7 Pickett. We just mentioned that third straight 300 yard game Wyoming. Total yards 163 88 on their touchdown drive and third quarter yards the Cowboys. A little silent in this in that past third quarter and Washington look at look at Washington no punts no penalties how's that possible well the mistakes have hurt them or they might be up 50 to 7 what a wonderful rumble by Kevin Ware well Cody Pickett we were telling you about he was a championship rodeo fighter growing up he learned that from his dad D Pickett who was the best in the world this is Fox 1984, but here's Cody at the age of four. Check it out. <laughs> Beautifully done, Cody Pickett. He said he wanted to go into basketball, but he was a national rodeo finalist in 97 98. Four sport athlete. One of those is not that hard. Golf, as far as physical. Is that a sport? It's a skill. It's a skill. Yeah. It's a skill. But what an athlete to be able to play football, basketball, golf, and rodeo. My high school didn't have rodeo. Well, you just did go to a. a or I thought you I'm went to a rural. Kansas. I thought you went to a rural high school. I'm from Kansas, but we didn't have rodeo. Man. Well, you you we could, did have a chess team, though. You know, Fizz, you can play sandlot baseball, you know, backyard football. Go out and have your own rodeo. <laughs> but, that, you know, you go. And, and what is his, uh, the name of the street he lives on? Isn't it like Chicken Ranch Lane? It's a great story <laughs> about that. Rick Neuheisel had to go down there, and he says, I couldn't believe the name of the sign on the road. Opening a Ford Field, they got the, they got the big big. They got the our old friend Joey Harrington's going to get the call. Joey for the Harrington Lions. getting his first start. Howie Terry JB out the big shows out at uh, Detroit. Troy and Chris and uh, Mr. Buck, they're all there. It's a big show. Patrick Reddick and Cody Pickett. I mean, he has been on the money. He's had four drops in this game. And when you look at his numbers now, he's completed 30 of 41 passes for 361 yards. And how about that? He has just tied a school record with 33 first downs tonight. Well, Steve, you know something? The, the continuity aspect, talking to Keith Gilbertson before the game, the offensive coordinator, you know, I asked Gilby, I said, what, what's the measuring stick tonight? You know, and, and that's a hard one to gauge because you, you got to keep being productive on offense, and they've done a great job doing that all night. Beautiful throw to the 10 yard line for a first down. And, and they've had a lot of drops. There's a flag that went down late, right behind the line of scrimmage, and it came from the referee, Gordon Reese. Watch this. I like Pickett. Great play action. Then watch him step up. Steps up, avoids the rush, and it's going to be a late hit. That mm -hmm. was. Roughing the passer on a defense, half the distance to go from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Watch this. Watch Paul Arnold. He's having a stellar game. Watch him work back. You see him work back to the ball. That's that's what Kellen Winslow was talking about this morning. Work back to the quarterback. Give the quarterback an angle to throw at. And you may too one day be a Hall of Famer. And Washington has just set a school record with their 34th first down. They have a first and goal at the five yard line. 99 yards rushing on the night for Washington. 
388 through the air. Option. And they cough it up again, and Pickett runs out of bounds, but that is four times they fumbled in this game, and they've recovered one, and they've given three to Wyoming, and that's something they need to tune up before heading to conference play. Well, it, but the play, Steve, I, I, I admire what they're doing. I mean, watch coming into your screen. Here comes the pitch man, and, I mean, it, it's a it's a different kind of play. I mean, all of a sudden, number 22, that was, that was Ty Eriks. He, he had alligator arms. I mean, he just short-armed it. He didn't go after the ball because the defender was right on top of him, but give him credit. It was an interesting play. Chris Singleton now in the game. Pickett looking, flipping. Frederick breaks free to the seven-yard line. It will be third down and goal to go. Steve, what I like so well right here is Cody Pickett in the pocket. Watch him work this space right here. All of a sudden, he'll step up, feel some pressure. Boom, get out of there. Keep the ball up and deliver it on time. So he never lost a beat. The ball's up and throw in position the whole time. I like blocks down the field too, but I mean, he was right there. Move side to side, lateral drill. They work on it every day in practice, Steve Axman. Quick feet, quick feet, move, and that's where Cody Pickett is so good. His legs are with him all the time. Third and goal for the Huskies. Give the, give the slot guy the ball. Pickett, touchdown, Patrick Reddick. Oh, they heard me. Slot guy. Give the slot guy the ball. I mean, they're not even lining up on the slot. That's why they go to the slot. Keep an eye, Cody Pickett again. For the ball, boy, that's that's just getting it in there before the defender gets there. That's, that's a little bit of a dicey throw, but Patrick Reddick has really had a, a, a nice game, as well as Paul Arnold and Reggie Williams, all of them good games it's 38 to 7 Washington Cody Pickett with now 404 yards passing and two touchdowns. He already holds the school record with 455 yards passing last year against Arizona. The Nissan scoring drive took 314 and 10 plays beautifully executed 80 yards. Finally Pickett to Reddick. Patrick's first touchdown of the year. So many weapons this Washington team has. They cut down on those mistakes. They're going to be a real force in the Pac-10 conference. Pac-10 hit hard today. And they suffered four losses after entering the weekend with a record of 22 and four against non-conference foes. But USC lost to Kansas State. Cal, you talked about losing to Air Force. Arizona lost at Wisconsin. Well, the teams that are on a roll right now, Steve, how about the state of Oregon? The Oregon Ducks. Unbeaten. Shutting out Portland State today. And then, of course, Oregon State. They scored 59 on Fresno State. Oregon State, they, they don't, they had the, I'd say Dennis Erickson now. He, uh, Dennis Erickson used to be the coach here at Wyoming one season before he left for Washington State. And I just think, Dennis Erickson has done a miraculous job, and, and he's had so much influence on so many programs, Steve. Two weeks ago, Sonny Lubick, of course, at UCLA. You know, look at look at some of the, you mentioned that one, Oregon State. Next week, it'll be Oregon State at USC, and USC had a tough one today against Kansas State. That's a, that's a tough place to play, but Arizona losing, UCLA getting walloped by Colorado, and, you know, credit Gary Barnett. He, he took a team that, 
really got pounded the week before by Southern Cal in Boulder, and they were able to respond and come back to L.A. and take a win away from UCLA. The college football crew will be there next week, and that's a hit. Derek Johnson has delivered two terrific hits in this ball game. That time, popping Malcolm Floyd, the wide receiver from Sacramento. You know, it was interesting just listening to Keith Gilbertson, and you asked him the question. We'll, we'll see this again, Rams. Yeah, Bramlett does a nice job, Steve, getting it down the field. And like you said, I mean, Derek Johnson, watch this. Bam. <laughs> Now Leonard Jones around the left side and Jones finally pushed out of bounds by Evan Benjamin. There is a flag on the play. The Rams I want I want to tell people about a comment that you made because Dennis Erickson has had a great influence in college football. I mean he's a wonderful football coach and yep. you asked Keith Gilbertson that you said how has he influenced you and, and and his comment was if you're not influenced by Dennis you're either not listening or you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no he didn't and he didn't take well he didn't take a personal shot at anybody but it, it was funny it was mm -hmm. funny when he said that I've known Gilby forever too I've known him almost as long as I've known him right there Rick Neuheisel Erickson though really has done a great job and, and you know what Erickson and, and Mike Bellotti and holding offense and Neuheisel have been able to do oh Gordon Reese got to turn that mic off sometimes when there's Angry players. Ten yards from the previous spot, still first down. There we go. Um, you know, the continuity, Steve, on coaching staffs is so important. And, you know, when you have successful coaches, you know, coaches around the country, they want to work for guys that do a great job offensively and defensively. But, you know, the spread offense that is effective at running the ball. Dennis Erickson's been doing that a long time. And right now he's got a couple of young players. Derek Anderson, the quarterback, taking over for Jonathan Smith. Jonathan Smith is coaching Derek Anderson, so you know he's going to be efficient. And he's got a lot of tools. And Steven Jackson, the great running back for the Beavers, they're, they're going to pose some problems in the Pac-10 this year. That is the seventh sack by Washington. That's pretty that's pretty impressive. That's 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 a big list of names. You know, look at the programs. I mean, Michigan, Lloyd Carr, Bobby Bowden, Phil Fulmer. That's a new Heisel, 70%. Yeah, you know, Steve, I'll tell you, there's a lot, there's some national championships among those coaches right there. And I think Washington is primed, and I'll I'll say this for the record. I think the University of Washington is primed in the next two years to make a run at a national championship. There's no question because when you look down and you see that Rick Neuheisel on defense only has three seniors playing on this team and an offense he only has two seniors playing on this team. I think they're going to be really good next year. I think they could be very good this year even better next year. Now, now anyone that's remotely close to college football will tell you as Wyoming faces a third and 28. One win, or I'm sorry, one loss, may, you, you may see a team with one loss playing the Miami Hurricanes, who probably won't lose a game this year. <laughs> Don't they still have to go to Tennessee, though? Uh, well, Tennessee is, is human. They lost today. Florida came in and beat them. Well, they get a lot back all the way to the 40-yard line. They're still five shy of a first down as Vines makes the catch. Miami, though, in my... FoxSports.com poll this week. My crystal ball had Miami as the top team in the country. And you know who my second team was? Tennessee. Miami. Oh. Because nobody's close to Miami. So then Texas was my number three team. I just wish Miami played in a better league because they only have to get up for so many teams. I mean, yes, they have a they have an aggressive schedule at Florida, at Tennessee, at Syracuse. They've got Florida State in the schedule and Virginia Tech. But they also have four gimmies, yeah. Temple, Yukon, Rutgers, and Florida A&M. Those are four. And yeah. you don't see that. I mean, Washington goes to Michigan to play. And then they've got the Pac-10 conference. It's tough.
seven fifty one remaining in this football game Washington all over Wyoming thirty eight to seven they were up seventeen seven earlier took over in the second half plenty of smiles on a beautiful evening in the Pacific Northwest new quarterback and it is Taylor Barton the senior from Beaverton Oregon. Chris Singleton this guy has great speed past the 50 to the 46 yard line the sophomore from Etiwanda California you mentioned Singleton watch he just hits it right here Steve and nice fullback ISO on the linebacker again and Singleton showing elusiveness and good speed a gain of 28 yards for Singleton a nice way to get started. They've always talked about his great speed. They say he needs to improve his vision reading the defenses on where to hit the holes. Well, they need to work him in because Alexis is going to take some shots during Pac 10 play. Well, they also have a kid named Kenny James there they really love. He's just a true freshman. And you know what would really help? Is a veteran to be healthy like Braxton Clement. I thought he was a wonderful running back, but he just has not been able to stay healthy. This is Taylor Barton. He had only one start last year versus UCLA, but you might remember he also came off the bench when Cody Pickett got injured against USC to lead them to a brilliant fourth quarter drive for the victory. And Washington put a lot, they put a lot of fourth quarter comebacks together last year. They had four mm -hmm. in conference alone. That's a bunch. Again, Singleton, not much there this time. Washington also, Steve, has a very long home winning streak. Longest active home winning streak in the Pac-10 conference at 15. Only Nebraska and Miami have longer ones. Nebraska yep. with 24 and Miami with 17. But Rams I wanted to ask you last year the Washington Huskies went eight and four yet they gave up more points than they scored and they were minus in turnovers. How did they get the eight wins. You know I, and I didn't want you to ask me that question that that's just resiliency and I think playing a solid four quarters of football. It's not given in at the end of the game in crunch time knowing where to go with the ball. Knowing your assignments and executing because sometimes you're going to fall behind. It's it's how you execute at the end of the game. I mean, you got to make the plays in the fourth quarter that you made in the first quarter, and vice versa. Four of Washington's six packed in wins came right down to the wire. Remember, they beat Cal by three, beat USC by three on an Anderson field goal as the buzzer sounded. Beat Arizona. Pick it with three seconds left with the sneak. And we watched Cody Pickett's brilliant drive against Arizona State that took seven minutes off the clock to get in field goal position for a short chip shot for John Anderson for the game winner. Singleton. Not much. Well, and if, if this will tell you something, just how it, I mean, and this is this this happens under under Rick Neuhausel at Washington in his four years. Twenty seven wins. 20 of those have been come from behind. They are 11 and 6 in their last 17 games when trailing after three quarters. So that's how you win. You keep it close, you win at the end. And one thing that Rick has always talked about was winning the time of possession battle. Have more snaps. Well, Steve, both Washington and Oregon, and, and they battled it out for supremacy of late, along with Oregon State uh, in the Pac 10. All the game. I mean, you get into the thick of the Pac-10 schedule, and these games are three-point games, two-point games. They can swing either way. You got to get lucky once in a while too. Talk to Tyrone Willingham at Notre Dame about being lucky, huh? Four and zero. He'll tell you, hey, you got to have, you got to be lucky once in a while, but you got to, you got to always be focused. You got to be focused, and you got to believe you can win. And that's what separates the good coaches from the coaches that don't win in the fourth quarter. Taylor Barton, beautiful throw. And Wilbur Hooks 
inside the 15 yard line for a first down. Man, he threw it right in between the corner and the safety. This is a this is a nice throw. Having this guy healthy, Steve, Wilbur Hooks, here's a guy who's fast as lightning. And to have his experience is such a big attribute for this offense. Rick Neuheisel, you tell me as a head coach and former quarterback, you don't like having those kinds of players around that have experience. Veterans in the program, Patrick Reddick, Wilbur Hooks, guys that you can plug in any time. Singleton with the fumble, Wyoming will recover, and that is one area that needs to be improved for Washington to be successful this year. They have lost four fumbles in this game. Hey, Steve, can I share one st statistic with you, and it's nothing about fumbles or anything else. It actually is a very positive stat for Washington, but it really caught my eye when I read their notes. And Jim Daves just... The SID does a great job providing us with a lot of information. Washington has now finished either first or second in the conference in 18 of the last 25 years. Washington with a 38-7 lead. They have played near perfect football outside the four fumbles. Because we're talking about Washington never punting in the game and never seeing a flag thrown against them. Leonard Jones around the left side cut down near the 18-yard line. The last time they had no punts in a ball game was against UCLA in 1962. That's 40 years ago. The last time they had no penalties in a game was against Stanford in 1948 and Washington State in 1960. They also have a record of the most little, first downs. I was, I'll tell you, you get you get through a game without your punter coming on the field. That, that's that's significant when the punter never gets on the field. That's good. Doing something right. Blitz. Bramlett was clocked. And a flag is thrown. That will be roughing the passer. That is the first penalty thrown in the ball game. I bring it up, and they get a penalty. Nate Robinson, true freshman corner. Watch him. He's going to become right off, right off the corner, short side of the field. I don't think that's a penalty. Well, roughing the passer, defense. Rams. 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. Ball was out, and he hit him high. That's why the flag came out. Tell me about this, though, Steve, would you? Chunkies. Trivia. Name the four Division I-A schools with older stadiums than Washington's. Husky Stadium, which opened 82 years ago. Georgia Tech in 1913. Mississippi State 1915. Cincinnati in 1916. And Wisconsin. Wisconsin beat a Pac-10 team today in Arizona. Josh Barge. Check that it was Derek Armagh on the carry. No, it was Josh Barge. Number 22, the true freshman from Blue Springs, Missouri. Kit Bradshaw. I saw the number two. I thought it was 22. Then I thought it was 28. Then I find out it's 32. So excuse me. 216 remaining in the football game. Washington trying to go to two and one on the season and Wyoming would set a school record with their 12th consecutive loss. Bramlett incomplete at the 40 yard line. I mean the last time Wyoming lost 11 games in a row it was two seasons covering 1929 and 1930. That's a long time ago. 
And, and you know what, Steve? They're good enough. They're going to win some games now They've this got, year. They host the Citadel next week. They're, they're going to win some games this year. They're, they're, they have some talent, and you, you know what? They just don't have a lot of depth. You can see it when they play a team like Washington. Vic Coning there, the head coach, they're doing the right things in practice. They're practicing hard, and I'll tell you what. If you get one win, one win, and snap out of the the funk, if you will. I mean, look at that. That's a great play. Ralph, that is a heck of a catch. But what I'm saying, Brock, Ralph, they, these guys don't give up. Now, people in Wyoming are, are prideful people, but Vic Cohn, I'll tell you what now, he is a prideful coach. He won't let these guys get too far down on themselves. And they should. This is a good football team they're playing. Washington Huskies are, are a very good football team. On the sweep, Derek Armaugh past the 30-yard line, and he will get a first down. I mean, that's big running. You know, I would imagine it is so hard to recruit because you're at the University of Wyoming. You're in a state that has only 400,000 people. Contrast that to California, which Washington, the Oregon schools, Arizona drags from. California has 33 million people. There's Steve, a lot of athletes there. Steve, and, and counting, right? Every every college coach I talk to, you know, I ask them, where, where's the most important place to have an influence? Guess what? Southern California, Los Angeles, Orange County, San Diego County, San Bernardino County. It, it's now you may I saw something really interesting about kids from Texas and I and I read a quote this week by an unnamed college coach because I can't remember who actually said it because <laughs> I don't You're believe so in these honest. unnamed things I just I would tell you if I could remember but they said the kids in Texas play so much football that when they come into program sometimes what a throw by Bramlett. That's Scotty a big Vines with the catch. I'll wrap this up in a second. Go ahead. The executive producer of Fox Sports Net is Bill Borson. The coordinating producers of College Football Saturday are Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Tonight's game was produced by Dennis Kirkpatrick and directed by Doug Freeman. The College Football Saturday studio show was produced by Lloyd Maxson and directed by Joe Whitus. Senior Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Berry. Director of Field Operations is Debbie Kilmart. At the 12 yard line, Casey Bramlett in trouble. Spins around and is decked at the 12 yard line. I like it. Cody Pickett has to be our player of the game. He only had 11 incompletions, 404 yards, two touchdown passes. His offense needs to hold out of the football, though. They fumbled it four times, and now he's getting it from his teammates, <laughs> the business. Hey, leave me alone. <laughs> so, Fizz, real quick, the end of this recruiting story. The kids that come out of Texas play so much football, by the time they get to Division 1A, they're, they're kind of burned out. Seriously, they got so much spring practice, and what the coaches say is they don't have that much upside. They've tapped out already, but the California kids, and, and look, I'm just telling you, a lot of kids come out of California. They have huge upsides. Kids in Florida, you know, they, they don't play as much spring practice as Texas either, but Let's watch the end of Wyoming's series here, and that's kind of the end of my story. <laughs> On play action. Inside the 10-yard line, what, did he hold on to it? I don't think so. Vines trying to grab that football. Yes, it's hard to recruit anywhere. That's that's the that's the wrap to my story. It's it's a not it's a, it never ending saga because you, you gotta you gotta be present in so many places but you gotta have resources that allow you to be places well i think parents have to be a little more responsible making sure their kids are more well-rounded that they're not driving them towards their goal rather than letting the child choose his goal there's bramlett fires it almost picked off sam cunningham was right there intended for javon bonite Talking about responsible parenthood. See, I wasn't able to read to my kids tonight. I feel bad. Yes, but you did bring your lovely bride on the road 
and you had some special time with her. Yes, I did. You were doing the husband thing. <laughs> it's fourth and ten. We will be at USC next week. Oregon State heading down Interstate 5 to take on the University of Southern California Trojans. Bramlett. Bow Knight. Nope. One last shot, and that's it. Well, they gave it a good go, that's for sure. And uh, Wyoming. They don't give up easily, Steve, and, and they're going to win. They're going to win some games this year. They will win some games. That effort will get them some W's. They are home to the Citadel next week. They need to get that because then they travel down the road to Colorado State, and they are very good, the Rams. Colorado State's really good. We saw them. Sonny Lubick has them playing well. Young quarterback in Justin Holland and Bradley Van Pelt. The experienced one, and, and that's a nice one two punch. I tell you, when you can use two quarterbacks effectively in the course of a ball game. Rick Neuheisel gets the victory. He is now two and one on the season. Washington will host Idaho next week. Cody Pickett, a heck of a game with 404 yards passing. Once again, our final score is 38 to 7, Washington. For many of you, your regional news is next.